Welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing the heresies that have surfaced throughout the history of the Church, and today we'll discuss modernism. Modernism is a bit harder to precisely pin down, since there's no single figure responsible for it. J.J. Rousseau seems to have been the first to use the term, but it certainly didn't become popular because of him. I've heard numerous key figures cited as the ones responsible for modernism, from Immanuel Kant to Karl Marx, all the way to Sigmund Freud and Charles Darwin. However, while these men may have done things which caused the modernist heresy to grow and flourish, they were not responsible for creating modernism as such. This is because modernism is not merely a single mistake in philosophy which can be traced back to the person who invents it. Rather, it's a whole mentality and a way of seeing the world. Traditionally, definitions of modernism have been pretty vague. However, at base, all modernism prioritizes new thoughts and ideas over old ones, and often to the exclusion of older ideas without concern for whether they're compatible or which ideas are best supported. This obsession with newness is a problem by itself. After all, if everything has to constantly be made new, then nothing can ever be considered reliable or true, and therefore there's no longer any way to defend modernism, since even if it were true, there would be no way to prove that, since the truth would have to be revised later when something new came along. So, what were the new things that modernists were trying to promote? Freedom, in a sense. Still, as Lincoln once said, freedom for wolves means death for sheep, so what specific kinds of freedom were being promoted? Let's take a look at the different kinds and see why these would be heretical. Number one, freedom from the authority of the church. The problem with this is that if the Catholic Church is really protected from error by the Holy Spirit, the authority of the church comes from God, and there is simply no escape from God by modernism or otherwise. Our relation to God will affect our ultimate fate, whether we want it to or not, and trying to avoid listening to the church doesn't affect that. Number two, complete freedom for science to travel through every field of knowledge and investigation without any conflict with church teaching being possible. In the very first season of Clean Cut, I explained why scientism, the view that only science can provide reliable knowledge, doesn't even work under its own rules. This is not a religious truth, but neither can it be proven using science alone. You need to be open to logic as well in order to understand the problems with scientism. Furthermore, religion also provides a consistent set of morals, which are necessary in order for the natural sciences to function. For instance, there's nothing unscientific about a scientist who lies about what the findings of his experiment prove. Science only covers the experiment itself, not its implications. So, if he measures the ears of five dozen rabbits and claims that this proves that there's life on Betelgeuse, well... He did his science right by measuring the ears properly, but he's still wrong about what those measurements prove. It's still immoral of him to lie like that, but without some sort of moral authority to hold him accountable for his deception, he could basically say anything. And if all you've got to go on is science, nobody could prove him wrong. Narrowing the playing field to only science does nothing to expand our knowledge of the world. What it does is increase our vulnerability to being conned by scientists who are no longer doing science. Number three, the freedom of the state to be completely unobstructed by religious authority. This one has always seemed a bit strange to me, since the state is responsible for much of the suffering that ordinary working men and women experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Traditionally, throughout history, the authority of the state has been used to consolidate wealth into the hands of only a few, to oppress the poor, to try to control what poor citizens believe, to obstruct their freedom, and to promote various kinds of sinful behavior among a population that didn't desire them. The church, by contrast, has gotten in the way of governments for the purpose of protecting the poor, the helpless, the weak, and generally anyone who's unable to protect themselves. The Magna Carta, the document that limited the rights of the rich aristocracy over the poor, wouldn't even exist if not for the Catholic Church. So why in the world would ordinary people want this guardian angel to stop protecting them from the whims of the capricious governments under which they've always suffered? Well, one thing about governments is that they have no moral obligation to tell the truth or to protect truths which are unpopular. 
They're also not above being manipulative and dishonest when it serves their purposes. So if a teaching of the church starts to lose favor in the public eye, leaders in government might start talking to people exclusively about that, about how horrible it is that some people still believe Thing X, which is responsible for causing so much harm and inconvenience to us in our lives. If they harp on it long enough, people begin to think about it more often, even if the issue almost never affects them personally or affects them in a positive way. And the more they think about this upsetting issue, the more upset they begin to feel about it until it influences their decisions. This is especially easy now, with the news media and the internet making it so easy for the rich and powerful to get their ideas into your heads. Indeed, whenever any rich or powerful person is publicly disliked, it's usually due to fights between different groups of powerful people where one group chooses to use this kind of propaganda against another by turning a large section of the public against them. Most of all, this propaganda doesn't need to be true in order to have this effect, since most people don't check the facts they hear on the news or find floating around online. By the way, I do check and double check all the facts I put in these videos, though I'm sure you'll want to double check them for yourself. I know I would. So, the long and short of it is that governments and the rich have a lot of influence over the opinions and behaviors of their citizens, even without resorting to actual bribery, which is also not unheard of. That explains how the state could convince its people to take their side over that of the church, which has traditionally acted to defend them. Number four, the freedom of both the individual conscience of each person to be unobstructed by the claims of the faith or the authority of the church and of the overall conscience of the general public to dominate that of the church. In short, people want both their own conscience and the conscience of the general public to take precedence over the Catholic faith. And again, if the church is protected from teaching error by the Holy Spirit, and neither the individual nor the general public are, then it makes precisely zero sense for this to be the case. Modernists also prioritize a spirit of constant change, despising anything that remains the same, and stress the need for all people to be united through feelings of the heart, including people of contradictory religions and even atheists, all on some basis that goes beyond differences in doctrine. The problem with this one is that there is no basis that transcends the question of what statements are true and what are false. Every last question ever asked falls within that category. By contrast, feelings are often just impulses, revealing nothing about the real world to us. We may feel like Stacy really likes us, but that doesn't make it so. Now, another key point about all of these tendencies, and the reason why modernism is not as such intellectual, is that none of them is proven. They're just sort of assumed to be true. From that basis, modernists try to rationalize, illustrate, and increase the strength of their mistaken impressions about the world. The notion that you can cling to truth while also agreeing with the spirit of the age in which you live in every single way possible. The truth is there has never been a single age that got absolutely everything right, and they've been getting more things wrong ever since modernism started up, which tries to place the world over God and make human freedom the ultimate authority. When each person sees themselves as the ultimate authority, they can make any mistake at any time, and this is why a lot of the old heresies have started to come back. Pope St. Pius X couldn't have been more right when he called modernism the synthesis of all heresies. After all, what is a heresy but a public dissent from church doctrine, and modernism encourages dissent from all matters of faith and morals that the church teaches. It's encouraged people to make up their own ideas of morality, their own things to believe in, and given certain scientists permission to start doing amateur philosophy while telling the public falsely that it's science. For this reason, the main form that modernism takes today is an overpowering sense that matters of faith and morals are only determined by our own different perceptions and considerations. Relativism with regard to morality and religion, therefore, the flat denial of the church's entire role in passing on truth. There couldn't be any view more contrary to the Catholic faith than this one, which is why it has always been opposed by the church. Of course, there are so many modernist errors that to list the official condemnations of each one would probably double the length of this video. But in spite of repeated condemnations of modernist claims and even the issuing of an oath against modernism on September 1st, 1910 by Pope St. Pius X, modernists have continued to spread throughout the church, claiming to be Catholics in good standing, all while doing their absolute best to destroy the authority of the Catholic Church. 
That's the last of the major heresies that we'll be looking at, but next time we'll see what's happened since then and what heretical claims are being proposed now. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.